In this screencast, we'll have a look at engine inlets. And we'll begin by looking at the fundamentals of the inlet and then how they work for different types of engine. So the function of an engine inlet is uh, threefold. One, it is to uh, recover the ram uh, pressure. The second is to deliver air to the engine under all flight conditions. And the third one is to hold drag to a minimum. So if I look at the first uh, condition, ram recovery first, and we'll begin by looking back at the continuity equation. So if I take a, an engine inlet, it will have some cross-sectional area A. And we'll take a mass of air, and we'll say that the mass has a velocity uh, C here of 10 meters per second. I'm using the letter C instead of the letter B because we'll be talking about volume as well. So, so, so to make sure we don't get confused, I'm just going to use the letter C here. The air comes into the engine. And if it is going at 10 meters per second, then after one second, it should have extended out here by 10 meters. So after one second, what volume of air has gone through? Well, the volume will be the cross-section area times uh, the velocity here, which is, which is 10. So it's, it's AC. But we know that density is equal to uh, mass over volume. And I can rearrange that to say that the mass is equal to the density times the volume. I've just written it here, mass is equal to density times the volume. And we know that the volume is equal to uh, AC. So that mass of air has gone through this inlet in one second. So we can say that this is the mass flow of air, and we put a little dot on it. So that's the mass flow of air. Okay, so that's the continuity equation. M dot is equal to rho AC. So what effect does this have on thrust? Well, if we take the thrust equation, then you have that thrust is equal to the mass flow times the velocity of the jet stream minus the velocity of the aircraft plus the area of the nozzle times the pressure differential between the nozzle and the engine in it. And we're going to say that the mass flow is rho AC, um, but I'm going to go back to using V for velocity here. So I hope that doesn't cause so much confusion. So if I have uh, an aircraft, and let's say it was traveling at 10 meters per second, we would have, well, 300 minus 10 is 290. We'd have 200 times the mass of the airflow for trust. If I increase the airspeed to 100, that 290 drops to 200. So 300 minus 100 is 200, so 200 times the mass. So you can see with, with, a, with an increase in airspeed, there might be a decrease in thrust. However, this mass flow is equal to rho AV, rho AV. And we can replace this V here with the velocity. So if it's 100 here, it's a uh, hundred here. So you can see that this has increased. So the thrust will increase with velocity. Okay. So when we combine you know the decrease due to this part with the increase due to this part, we get an overall slight increase in thrust uh, with velocity. And that's what the whole RAM recovery is. So as air comes in, uh, the faster we go, we should be getting a little bit more trust out. Okay. Now there is a speed called the ram recovery speed. And you know, as the air comes in, uh, it comes into the engine in that, and it hits the fan, and it begins to stagnate here at the fan, just as it hits the fan. So as the air hits the fan, and you know, it slows down, and so its pressure increases. And when the pressure here is exactly the same um, as the pressure in the ambient uh, air, then we've said we've reached the RAM recovery speed. Okay, so
So that's RAM recovery. The second uh, point is the delivery error under all flight conditions. So when the air comes into the inlet, uh, it eventually comes and meets the uh, compressor or the fan, uh, either or. Now when the air, uh, so this is the air coming in, and when the compressor blades or fan blades are rotating, let's say the compressor blades are rotating, when, they, when they're ro rotating down, uh, as the blade run rotates down, the air flow over the blade, so it goes that direction, so it's this vector here. So the air flow over the blade is this purple vector here, and that's the, uh, um, the Pythagoras, it's this VA squared plus the RPM, let's call it squared, so it's the square root of those. And in order that the air flow over the compressor blade, so so that this vector here doesn't reach the speed of sound, Mach 1, we have to ensure that this velocity here, VA, is below Mach 0.4 under all stages of flight. You know, so if that increases to Mach 0.5 or 0.6, then the airflow, because it's this value plus this value, the airflow over here would definitely be supersonic. So we need to control this uh, to below 0.4, and that gives us a problem. How can an aircraft flying at Mach 0.8 have an airflow at Mach 0.4 at the compressor inlet? Or for a supersonic aircraft, how can an aircraft flying at Mach 2.2 have an airflow at Mach 0.4 at the compressor inlet. Well, to do that, we will have to uh, uh, review Bernoulli's theorem. So with Bernoulli's theorem, we saw that when uh, air can, comes in, uh, as it comes through a Venturi, the air speeds up. Uh, when we get this increase in velocity, this point here, V2, we keep this equation constant then there must be a decrease in pressure. So as the air speeds up, there's a, a decrease in pressure. So when we were talking uh, about a Venturi, for example, we call this part here the converging part, and this part here the diverging part. So the, the, the duct is converging to a point, and here it's diverging from that. Now, in low speed flight, um, you know, anything below Mach 0.4, then uh, the density air is said to be reasonably constant. So we can say that the density is constant you know, between this point, this point, and this point. So I've replaced row 1, which is row, row 2, with row, and row 3, which is row. So we can see then that if this is constant, excuse me, <coughs> if this is constant, then if the velocity increases, there will be a decrease in pressure. So in our example here, the velocity is coming in, it speeds up as it's going through the throat of the Venturi. Because of this increase in velocity, there's a decrease in pressure. Similarly, when it comes out, if we have the air, fast moving air here, as it comes into the, the duct, uh, it slows down. And the reason it does this is again back to the continuity equation. <coughs> so uh, we saw that m dot is equal to rho av, and if the density is constant, then I can say that the area times the velocity is constant at each of these locations. So if the area here at area 2 is smaller than area 1, then the velocity must be bigger than the velocity in one. And similarly, uh, for this section out here, if the area is larger than area 2, then the velocity must be smaller. And you just notice this is a diverging section. So with a diverging section, the area is getting bigger, 
therefore the velocity is getting smaller. And if the velocity is getting smaller, then the pressure must be increasing. And that is the basis of a um, duct for a, for a low-speed aircraft. For high-speed flight, um, if we're talking supersonic flight, it's, it's slightly different. As with high-speed flight, it sometimes it's called compressed flow, and that's because the density actually changes. So, if we can imagine our, our air coming in. So, our air is coming in through our, our duct here. And then, to get through the duct at, at this high speed, you know, it needs to compress down. And if we compress the air, then the density increases, and so does the pressure. So if I take air here in, in this side, so let's say this is high speed, uh, this is a high speed duct here. So the air comes in, comes to the convergent section. So once the air converges, uh, because it's high speed, you can just think of all the air just backing up and compressing, compressing all this air down. Then the, the density and, and, and pressure would increase. And if that happens, then the velocity drops off. The velocity will drop off until it gets to Mach 1. So let's assume it's Mach 2 comes in, gets compressed, density increases, pressure increases, so therefore the velocity decreases. Comes to this point, eventually it decreases to a point where we're at uh, Mach 1. And at Mach 1 we get a normal shock wave. So we've seen the pressure's increased, the, the density has increased, and the velocity uh, has decreased. So this side of the shockwave was supersonic flight, but once we went through it, we're now into subsonic flight. So the velocity was decreasing. So if we're in subsonic flight, then we're 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 back to um, you know as the area increases, the velocity decreases. So as we go out this side of the duct, then the velocity will continue to decrease, and as it decreases pressure will increase. Okay, and the last part is to hold drag to a minimum. So the the inlet, um, you know, we want to make that as small a frontal area as possible to minimize the, uh, the drag on the aircraft. Okay, so that's uh, the function of the inlets and we'll speak a little bit um, in more detail about the different types of inlets in the next video.